picture? <laughs> when Mexico's sending their people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, and they're rapists. And some, I assume, are good people. I'm at work, and I'm just minding my own business. When my boss yells, hey, I need to see you in my office now. This is the first time I have been called into my boss's office. And I have been working there for about a year and a half. As I'm walking to his office, I didn't know what to think. Keep in mind, this is my first real job. Yes, I work at Jack in the Box. I'm a team member. I have a name tag. And it says, hello, my name is Horacio Garcia. As I walk inside his office, he tells me, close the door behind you. It's never good when your boss tells you to close the door behind you. <laughs> but I hold my composure. I had no idea what I had done wrong. I go in the office and shut the door behind me. As I sit down, my boss starts talking about a letter. A letter from the government. He followed by saying, I am going to need a employment authorization document. Let me explain. If an individual is not a citizen of permanent of the United States, they will need a permit to work. Yeah, that's me. That's me. I am the unlawful citizen of the United States. Yeah, the one that pays the taxes and works like everyone else, but yet so considered the illegal immigrant. Mijo, listen, you have 80 days to turn it in, or you can no longer work, for, you can no longer work in Jack in the Box. I couldn't believe it. At that point, my legal resident. At that point, my legal residence is being questioned by the company. Yeah, but I need this job now. I need this job by Jack in the Box because I don't want to be working here in 10 years. This is my first job, and I need it. I tried to dismiss this question by acting confident. I told him, oh, OK, don't worry about it. I'll bring it away before that. When in reality, I was lying. I knew inside me that at that point, I couldn't renew DACA. The last I heard, Trump announced he was getting rid of DACA. My boss proceeds by asking another question. He said, is there anything you're not telling me or anything that I should be concerned about? Because if there is, Horacio, you cannot work here anymore. I keep lying. I tell him. I keep lying. I'm also lying to myself. Inside, I truly hoped I could get that employment authorization document. I said it over and over to myself. I'll bring it in as soon as possible. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Honestly, this is a lie. I felt like the weakest person alive. I felt powerless. And sincerely, I felt belittled. At this point, the only reason I didn't quit my job was because I really need the job. I need the money, not only to pay my insurance and gasoline for the car that me and my parents worked so hard for, but also to keep saving towards my big goal, college. The biggest reason I still work here is to save money for my education so that I will not be working at Jack in the Box 10 years from now, wearing a, wearing a name tag that says, hello, my name is Horacio. I walk in the house. I go straight to my room. My mom immediately knows something is wrong. She follows me inside, and I explain what, what had happened that day. As I am explaining, my father overhears, and of course, he steps in. He demands that I give it my two-week notice. Son, I don't want you working there anymore. I want you to quit that job. He was upset. He was pissed off. I explained to my dad that unfortunately, there was nothing I could do. My father assured me I did not need any job, that he would always make sure his family was well-dressed and fed, and he always has. 
My mom is watching the news. She yells, she yells for me to come into the living room. The news story said, DACA recipients had a new chance to renew DACA. This was a break we were looking for. She looked at me with one of the happiest faces you can have. A minute later, she's on the phone. She calls her lawyer to see if I could reapply right away. In that moment, she makes an appointment to see what we can do. We knew renewing DACA wouldn't be anything easy. At that appointment, the lawyer told us the harsh reality. The lawyer said she wasn't 100% sure it would go through. There was a possibility that we could lose the $700 of the application process. My mom, with no hesitation, said, yes, it doesn't matter, whatever it takes. The lawyer proceeds to tell us we were not waiting for a response from Homeland Security, either telling us we were in or out. For the next 40 days or so, my mom would check the mailbox as soon as she got home. E eventually, I started to notice a pattern. I noticed that every day after work, every day before she leaves the house, before she walks through the door at night, she would go straight over to the mailbox and anxiously check it. I can relate to this. When I order a new game online, I'm waiting for this package to come. I am at the mailbox day and night. Eventually, I had to ask her, what are you expecting in the mail? And she would say, nada, no es nada. When the letter got to my house, I realized what she was waiting for, my DACA work permit. She was waiting for it the whole time. The reason she wouldn't tell me, because she didn't want to get my hopes up. Just in case they did not approve me for any reason. After finally getting the letter from Homeland Security, the letter confirmed that we now had an appointment to get a criminal background check. Me and my parents were as happy as you can be. We were just a step closer to our big goal. The day of the background check was a very particular day. I had mixed feelings, being here for so many years. I've always been afraid of police. All those years of being silenced, I was not sure if I felt safe. Surrounded by these authorities, I was considered their enemy. I knew I wasn't the only one with the mixed feelings, with the same fears. I knew my mother felt the same way. I could, t I could tell by the way her eyes shined at me. She hugged me and wished me good luck. As I'm about to enter the government office, she was frightened, so scared, that she decided to wait for me at the car. I understood perfectly. I do not want to put my mother through any da a danger. There are three armed cops at the door. This place feels like a DMV. Everyone just looks pissed off. I just want to get out of here as fast as possible. <laughs> I am really nervous getting my fingerprints done. Maybe it was the fact that my mom couldn't go inside with me. And don't even get me started with the paperwork. It was confusing as hell, and I'm a straight-A student. Now, it made perfect sense. Like I said, my name is Horacio Garcia. I mention my first name and last name all the time. I am proud of all the struggles and hard work that the man who gave me this last name is. Of course, my father. Let me talk about this man. This man is everything. My father is the reason why. Why I have a 3.7 GPA why I have studied for the ACT and the ACT, and why I have taken the test. The reason why I don't go home directly from school, and why I, am why I am constantly working on my grades, trying to improve academically. I am going to college. I'm going to college. I am going to become a software developer. Next month, I am flying to Seattle. I have been invited to the University of Washington and Microsoft headquarters. This is because of my hard work and academics. I am also, I'm also taking the ACT for the first time. In less than two months, I will be a senior and finally done with my junior year, getting ready to start applying to colleges and scholarships. My father, this man is very hard and harsh when it comes to reality, which hits me very hard at times. My father is the most loving, supportive person I know, but he is also very down to the earth and realistic. He always reminds me and my two sisters that life is not easy and that we are not the same as other kids. We need to always keep that in mind. He tells us we can accomplish everything we want, but it will take a lot of work. It will take much more hard work than any other kid our age, but that if we want it, 
we are capable of accomplishing it all. He refers to school as a ladder, a ladder in which we start climbing since we are in Head Start. Until now, his saying is, you have climbed so high, you have a couple more steps to go. Don't give up now. You are almost at the top. Of course, this is very inspiring. My dad was 21 when he first decided he would leave everything behind. Our house, family, friends, jobs, cars, everything. To go to a country over 1,000 miles away. A country he had never been to before. A country where he had no friends, only one relative, no job, not even knowing the language yet. To start a new life, a life all over again, with a three-month-old baby and my, two si and my two-year-old sister, and of course, my mom. Could I do that? Could you ever do that? So exactly 17 years and six months ago, I was born in Culiacán, Sinaloa, Mexico. And exactly 90 days after is when I first arrived to the United States. So 52 days later, we finally got the approval for the United States government. However, temporarily, I am a United States lawful occupant. I am now safe for two more years. Sounds like great news, I know, but it feels more like a Band-Aid after open heart surgery. I live constantly in fear that maybe one day I will not be able to be with my family. That maybe one day all the years of hard work will not matter. I live in constant fear that one day everything my father stood up for and struggled will not be worth it. Will I ever go to college? Will I ever be able to have a stable job? Will I ever be free? Will I ever be able to live my dream? Thank you. Horacio Garcia!